in 2014, after receiving the CNC machine, one of the first problems to deal with was how I'd interface with the control board. The control board was designed to be driven by a PC via the parallel port. I had plans to try and use the Arduino, which I was quite familiar with, and the GRBL code, which I'd heard of in 3D printing, uh, for the driving the CNC machine. So the first thing I did was go and look at some of the pins uh, on the machine, as described in the data sheet, which showed what the connection should be for one of the CNC apps on a computer, and then maybe map those to pins on GRBL on the Arduino. I used fritzing to kind of figure some of these things out and draw them. And then I did a bit of point-to-point -point wiring with an Arduino. This was kind of flaky and fell apart. And uh, I mean, it was tricky because if you nudged it, it would drop out. And after a couple of hours of milling, if it drops out, trust me, that's about the most frustrating thing in the world. So then I decided, well, I wanted to go and get one of these prototyping boards, make all the connections on the prototyping board, solder a header onto the PCB in the milling machine itself, or in the uh, milling machine's controller, which had an extra header that mirrored what was on the parallel port, and connect the Arduino internally. Here's a board from the CNC, and some terminal pins. 2.5 millimeter PCB headers. I need 13, rough and ready to save me a bit of counting. I know I need 13 times two. I'm just gonna shove it in here and go, well, first they're the right pitch, and there, is my 13. Nice and simple. Just get in there. Oh, well, there we go. Okay, knife not needed. These break away really easily. Beautiful. Right, got two sets of terminal pins. So we'll do one row at a time. That's useful. That ever so slightly wedges so it doesn't drop out. Oh, isn't that nice? Right. Okay, a little bit of solder, soldering iron on, and flux pin. Let's get that right in there. What I will do is I will do the four end pins first. Right. I've decided that while I'm here, I'm going to populate these connectors as well. Some articles online show where people have used them. Okay, I've received some new deliveries from Farnell, and last night I completed the board for the CNC machine. Um, it's taking the connections I've made with simple jumpers on uh, Arduino to the parallel port, which were a bit fragile and fell apart a lot, and what I've done is I've just made those connections more permanent on an Arduino Proto Shield. So there's a 26 way header in the middle and connections for each of those pins I wanted in there. Um, and yes, some pretty horrible solder jobs on the bottom. So that connection will go into a, a uh, Arduino like so. So these should clip straight in on top. I'll just pop those in. Gotta make sure all the pins are lined up. There we go, that's in. I've slotted this together, and the intention is that this will fit somewhere in this box here. And then somehow I've got to route this USB port outwards. Um, I might need to see if I can find a USB port extender so then I can route it out the back here and maybe through that hole there. Um, just look there's a hole there so I could use that for a USB port and eventually drop that uh, parallel port because I'm not going to use it because there is as discussed previously a header here on the board it's 26 pin so I've also got myself 26 way cable now I know only 25 of those are going to be used because obviously it's a 25 pin DB25 some IDC crimp style connectors so no soldering that's good because i don't fancy doing 26 times 2 in solder cups thank you very much and i also picked up now i was hoping to get a longer cable for the raspberry pi camera and i made a silly mistake it's a mistake anyone could make i ordered what i thought was a 50 centimeter cable and i ordered a 50 millimeter cable now there probably might be a project where this would be useful certainly with a pi camera 
um, but not the robot where I need a nice long cable. So that one I'll chalk it down to a silly error and put it in the store. Um, other things I've got is a Pi-Face RTC shim. So it's a real-time clock that's battery backed up for the Pi. And what's clever about this little thing, and I'll just get it out, so if you can look at and see that, um, is this shim means it doesn't actually take up the GPIO pins. It uses power, ground, and the I2C pins, um, and maybe one I address on the I2C bus, but everything else is free for use on other projects. So you can just pop this between your Pi and any other GPIO items, and hey presto, you now have a battery-backed real-time clock. So what this means is, if you turn off your Raspberry Pi and turn it on again, and totally depower it, you'd have lost the clock, the clock time will be set to some point in time that's not today. Unless you've got it picking up from an NTP server somewhere on the internet, it'll be wrong. This means that obviously once you've stored the clock, this one will stay up to date and keep time for you. So you'll be able to turn it on again and get the same time. Now if you're doing kind of camera projects, um, or even having a robot where you want to have a record of what's happened, time is rather handy. So later on I'm going to be fitting these cables onto here, oh, sorry, these connectors onto this cable, and then connecting this up to the board and the CNC controller. And then I'll give the CNC controller a test. I'll test it with just some G code and no spindle uh, active and see if I can put it through its paces. Um, I, I don't think I've made a wiring mistake. I did double check, obviously, possibility of reverse connectors. Um, and these connections all looked good when I tested it with a multimeter. Um, and it hasn't been handled roughly, so it should be all right. And then obviously I've got to try and fit it and house it into that big metal box. At some point I intend to replace that metal box with perhaps a more flexible ply box and get rid of that great big toroid. What a waste of space, eh? I went and mocked everything up inside this box with the Arduino to work out the cable lengths. Um, and I was able to basically just use a pen line and some cutter to cut it. Um, I didn't manage to record that. Now these IDC connectors, they are very handy. But there is a little bit of a trick to putting them on. How can I say? They take a lot of pressure and the pressure needs to come equally. Now you could try and do it by hand, but it really for a 25 connector thing, I'd, it's not it's not easily doable. And if you try to use pliers, uh, you're going to have uneven force, which I'm kind of slightly aware it will then kind of go into one side and then the other and then make a great big wonky connection. So what I've been doing is using this vise to clamp them in until they go. Now this side I've already also stuck on the strain relief. Probably won't need it, but better to have one I suppose, just so that it won't easily be tugged out this way, which is handy. So I'll show you the pro process I've been applying or the process I applied. The other thing of course by the way to be very clear about but with one forward one back you've still got to really match these connectors up. So what I'm going to do is make sure the notch ends up facing the same way right way up or down the notches will still end up facing the same place. It means you can do one on the opposite side and then turn it around for strain relief and I suspect if I was to look at some of the uh, Cables used for say the uh, the old older ID PATA drives and floppy drives. I suspect they use exactly this technique for the uh, the connectors that weren't in line, um, where one's up and one's down. And I probably never noticed until I thought about the uh, strain relief on this one. So I'll go ahead and connect it. Um, unfortunately, I'm waiting on a new tripod because the old tripod broke. So some very wobbly videos at the moment, uh, and I won't be able to video and clamp but uh, hopefully the new tripod will arrive and I'll be able to make much more stable videos again. So it's only when testing with a multimeter that I've spotted a mistake. Now this diagram which I use to solder this thing together and which I produce with fritzing is actually of the front of the maker shield. However while the cabling is at the front the uh, drag connections I made for the ground I put a solder track in which you can probably see here for the ground planes however these should be along up here because this is a diagram of the other side which was perfect for wiring up the other side <laughs> had me confused when I turned it over this way and started looking at it the other way up so maybe what I need to make sure I do next time is instead of doing it like this see if I can get pictures of both sides of the board so that I can be clear on what side I'm looking at I mean 
obviously when comparing it you can see where the holes are that this is the other side of the board if you look at the front of the board the wiring matches relatively nicely so yeah soldering iron out solder sucker out or solder wick and i'm going to have to do a bit of a cleanup job at least i know that this cable tests and all the conductors in the cable are good um, i've stuck my strain relief on the back my clamp trick worked this should keep it nice and clear of the fan and the other connectors on the other bit um, i'll take this out i was just using this header to get easy access to the pins inside for testing